what's going on guys and welcome back to another video uh, in this video in cinema 4d i will go over the basics of uh, rendering settings uh, so assuming you finish your model and you're ready to output it to video or image i will show you uh, the basics uh, to get a clean image or video out of your uh, uh, finished scene uh, so let's just get started uh, first things first you know a lot of people are using physical render instead of standard uh, it's up to you which one you want to use. Uh, in some cases, uh, physical is faster. In some cases, um, you know, standard is faster. So I, I prefer physical, and uh, it works for me. Uh, so the first things first, the output uh, tab. You have um, uh, presets here for different sizes. Uh, so you, you have your screen presets of uh, different sizes here. As you can see, 9, 920 by 1200 and so on. Uh, you also have, uh, for the web, uh, you can do... Uh, bunch of sizes here uh, obviously you can do film and video you have uh, HDTV uh, the 1080 uh, resolution uh, then you have your 4k uh, 2k and so on and then you have your print sizes you know whether it's leather size uh, b3 and so on so pretty much uh, in this tab you can specify uh, what kind of size you want to output it to uh, you can use the presets or you can enter it manually if you want to do 1080 by 1920 or you know anything that you want and um, for resolution if you're not doing it for a screen you can uh, bump up your resolution here so if you want to bump it up to 150 it's up to you but if you're doing it for a screen 72 will do just fine uh, next thing if you're doing a video you have a frame range so if you do current frame it's only gonna render one frame which is like a still image render if you want to do a video, uh, make sure you switch it to all frames, and that way it's gonna it's gonna render each frame, and uh, it's gonna output a video for you. So if you have uh, you know 90 frames, it's gonna do 90 frames. If you change it, you can you know put 900 frames, any number of frames here, and then uh, it's gonna render your video just fine from there. So that's that's the basics of the output tab. That's all you have to know, just the size pretty much. Uh, for the save tab. Obviously, you can uh, make sure the save um, checkbox is marked uh, so your image actually gets saved. You can actually save it later, but I usually just do it here. And then for the file, you specify the directory uh, where your file is going to be saved to. So you can choose you know, a desktop, um, documents, and so on. It's up to you, you know, the basic stuff. Uh, for the format, you can um, you know, specify if you want to do a video or image here. If you do, if you do an image, I would suggest using PNG uh, because you can change the depth of your image uh, to 16 uh, a bit channel instead of 8. You get more resolution and you get more control uh, when you're editing in Photoshop. Uh, and if you're doing a video, you can just do a quick time movie. And then for the options here, uh, you can just choose um, Apple ProRes uh, 422, or you could do Apple 4Res. Um, HQ, which is high quality, or if you're doing something simple or a test, you can obviously do uh, H264, which is like uh, MP4 format. Or and you have a bunch of other formats here uh, that work just fine. Uh, but if you know, I just use uh, ProRes and then I use H.264. That's my two favorite uh, formats. But you can obviously play around and uh, see what kind of stuff you like. And um, for the video, you would keep the depth the same. And like I said, for uh, images, you can do PNGs, JPEGs, or if you want to go higher, you can do TIFFs and so on. So that's uh, all you have to know for the save um, a tab. It's pretty much uh, choosing if you're doing a video or image, and then you're choosing where it's going to go. Uh, so the next thing is the, um, the actual physical tab. Uh, this is where you control the noise and uh, how clean your render is going to be. Uh, so you have your sampler and then you have your sampling size or sampling quality uh, If you want to be lazy, you can just do automatic and what it's going to do is going to uh, pretty much uh, Do all the hard work for you and uh, it's not going to optimize as much uh, But in my experience the time between optimizing and not optimizing was not a lot If you're doing still images, maybe for videos you can save a lot of time uh, But for still images, uh, I can wait extra few minutes to get a clean result uh, for the shading error uh, threshold, uh, I wouldn't suggest going for 5%. 10% uh, would do just fine. If you're still not happy with the image quality, you could probably drop it to about 8 or so. 
and uh, the, the quality is going to be really good. There's going to be no noise at all. And um, if you want to, you know, uh, optimize your scene instead of doing automatic, you can choose one of the presets here. Uh, so if you go for high, as you can see, the sampling um, subdivision is six, and then you have your subdivisions min and max. That's pretty much the you know controls uh, the amount of um, noise in your scene. Uh, so as you can see, it gives you uh, four here and seven. Um, if you're not happy and it's kind of slow, you can obviously drop it, for example, three and six, and uh, raise up your uh, error threshold here to about five and see uh, what that does. You know, if it's still noisy, uh, you can obviously drop the uh, shading threshold and so on. But if you don't want to play around, I would just suggest, you know, starting, for example, the sampling subdivisions, put it to about four medium and then you would do minimum two and then the max you would do four and uh, the shading uh, threshold I'll keep it at five percent uh, give it a render or uh, like a test render and see uh, how that does if you're not getting any noise uh, then you're fine if you're still getting noise you would just raise this number to six and then you would put uh, put these numbers to about like three and six a uh, really, really nice gap and um, you can obviously drop the um, shading error threshold, but I would just suggest keeping about 5%. I usually do from 8 to 10%. And uh, the noise is really kind of invisible unless you really zoom in. And then you can obviously see all the noise. Uh, but that's about it for the sampling. You pretty much, you know, the only three things you have to know, or uh, four things, is the sampling subdivisions. Uh, that's kind of like your total. And then you have min and max, and then you have your threshold, which controls the noise. Uh, so, you know, try to keep the gap between min and max to about two or three. Uh, so if you're still getting noise, uh, then maybe try, you know, four, four and eight. Like in those kind of ratios, uh, so it's even or odd numbers and a pretty nice gap in between. And uh, just play around and see what works for you. But like I said, for me, I would just uh, go with automatic. Uh, put the threshold to about 10% and uh, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, for uh, blurriness, shading uh, subdivisions and so on. Uh, for blurriness is when you're doing depth of field. If you're doing depth of field and you see a lot, uh, getting a lot of noise in your blurriness, uh, this is where you bump it up to about 3 or 4 and uh, it will definitely help out with the noise. Uh, but if you're not doing depth of field, then it doesn't matter. You can just put this to 0. Uh, the next thing is the uh, shadow. You know, all the lights produce shadow, obviously, and uh, ambient occlusion, and so on. Uh, so if you see any noise in your shadow, you can bump up this number to three, four, uh, and so on. I wouldn't suggest going above four because it's going to really slow down your render times. Uh, but other than that, if you keep it at three or four, it should be fine, and uh, your image or video uh, should be clean. Uh, the next thing you have this ambient uh, ambient occlusion subdivisions. Uh, right now, I don't have the effect added, but if you do add ambient occlusion, like you see, I have it here. Uh, you can go back to your physical tab here, and uh, if you see any noise in your ambient occlusion, you can obviously bump this number up to about three or four, like I said, and uh, it should get rid of all the noise that you have in your image, and you'll be good to go. And uh, the next thing is the um, SSD or SSS, the sub uh, subsurface scattering, and uh, usually. You know, you have subsurface scattering in your materials. Uh, so, for example, if you do have, uh, let's see, uh, I think it's under effects. Yeah, so you do effects, subsurface scattering, and uh, for example, you're doing wax for candle or you're doing uh, soap and so on, and you see your, your um, image is noisy, this is where you bump up the number to about, like I said, uh, three or four or five if necessary, but usually three or four it does the job uh, pretty good. Uh, and uh, let's see if there's anything else. Anti-aliasing is uh, only for standard, so as you can see, it's uh, disabled right now. Uh, but if you like using a standard render, you can obviously uh, uh, use the standard anti-aliasing, and uh, it works the same way. So as you can see, you have a geometry, and then you have uh, the min and max control, so you have one by one. 4x4, four four. if you're still getting noise, you can bump it up to 2x2, two 8x8, two, eight eight, and then you still have your threshold uh, for noise. So it's kind of the same thing as physical, 
is just uh, in a different tab. As you can see, this gets disabled. Again, physical uh, tab gets enabled. Uh, so it's the same thing, it's just in two different places. So don't get scared by that. Uh, so a quick review, um, you have your output. Uh, this is your size and uh, you can choose if you want to render one frame or all the frames. Uh, then uh, the next thing is the save. This is where you choose if you want to do video or, uh, or image. Uh, so as you can see, you have uh, your QuickTime and so on, and then you have your PNGs, JPEGs, TIFFs. And then if you do choose QuickTime, make sure you click Options. And then in here, uh, you have the compression type. You can choose uh, you know, MP4 format, and then you, can, you have your HD formats like 4K, uh, Apple ProRes, and so on. And uh, the next tab, you have um, anti-aliasing. Is it, That's if, if you're doing the standard render. If you're doing physical, then you would just skip the anti-aliasing and go to um, the physical tab. And then you have your sampler, uh, sample uh, sampling quality, uh, the min and max, and then uh, the threshold, which controls the noise. And then if necessary, you have control over uh, shadow, subdivisions, blurriness for depth of field, uh, ambient occlusion and SSS, subsurface scattering, and yeah, that, that's about it guys. That's all you have to know for your uh, rendering settings. It's pretty simple, uh, but you know, playing around with these numbers, uh, most of the magic does happen in the physical tab. Uh, so if you, um, you know, learn all the effects and um, how to optimize your scene properly, uh, you should be fine. You do have uh, decent presets here for medium to low too high and you have automatic and uh, most of the time uh, you know the error threshold is the only option that you know controls the noise uh, I wouldn't go lower than 8% because it's really you know the noise you can't really see that much if you put it to 5 and then you put it to 2% and so on it's gonna increase your render time like crazy uh, so I suggest using you know 8 or 10% and then play around with min and max and you should be fine from there Anyway guys, thank you for watching, um, hopefully this video helped you in any way, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll probably see you in my next video guys, have a, have a nice day.